Hey boaters, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. My used outboard motor buying guide is for sale on Amazon for $20. I'm offering now for a limited time. If you send me an email with proof of purchase at keithatoutboarddad.com, I will offer you a free half hour session over the phone. Love talking to you guys and helping you out with your motors or making sure you're making a good, sensible purchase. So pick up my buying guide. It will teach you the things you need to know so that you don't become one of those people who bought a boat and the motor's no good. Today we're continuing on with our Johnson Evinrude rebuild. We're gonna get this flywheel off of here and just get the rest of the electronics off of this engine. So we're gonna plug in our famous Harbor Freight impact. Again, one of the reasons I like the Harbor Freight tools, I had to grind this down. Doesn't matter because if it breaks, just buy a new set cheap enough. Harbor Freight Fuller Kit, which doubles as my hoist when I put the eye bolt in it for rigging my motors. Now we're going to crank down on this, get it nice and tight, and then we're going to smack it, give it a little shock. It should break this flywheel loose. Since it's been hammered on so many times, the top of it's kind of all buggered up. That's a technical term. Make sure you wear your safety glasses. There she blows. Okay, so we want to inspect this. Make sure the magnets are all good. Now some of these larger style, and I see a piece of filing in here. I don't know if that's from me or what, but some of the looper styles, the larger motors have the magnets glued into the inside of this. Looks pretty clean though. We can set this aside. So now we have our stator and our trigger base, which goes back and forth. So we're gonna just start removing all the electronics. I'm gonna keep it all plugged in together. There's a lot of 3 8 and 5 16 bolts here. We're just gonna pull it apart. There are a lot of grounds here, as you see this one right here. So we wanna make sure we take note of that because when we hook it back up, you gotta make sure all those grounds are in the right spots. There are a lot of these little wire holders. We wanna make sure we put them back in the same places as well. show you a little closer what this looks like so now what they do you can see a lot of these wires are connected inside here uh, we don't have to take all that off we're going to take these brackets off but also they're plugged in right so they fit in here nicely and we're just going to go ahead and unplug each one this is for each side which is connected to our stator and our trigger base and then we have the two brown wires which is our Pretty sure it's our alarm circuit. And then there's a few more here under some tie straps that we're gonna first take this off the rest of the way. Need a deep well for that. Also gonna disconnect my starter solenoid over here. That should slide out if we pull this up a little bit. Then I'll tighten that back up so we don't have to hunt for those later. So our trigger base is here, we'll get that next. So everything seems to be disconnected. Let's see, what am I missing? Oh, we're gonna pull off our regulator, a voltage regulator here. There's one broken bolt. So this regulator is water cooled and I'd be willing to bet, like most of these, it's never been removed. So it's gonna be a little crusty. So now we're gonna have to get in here with something and shock this a little bit. Let's see if we can get a screwdriver and a hammer. Not too bad, actually. So now we can get our stator. I'm going to go ahead and take the bolts out of here so they don't end up on the ground. Now there is the ignition wiring. It comes over to our main box here. So we're going to remove, I think this is our power tilt and trim box. These are our connectors here. We're going to disconnect our VRO pump wires. These are our uh, connectors that go up to our ignition and our power tilt and trim. So should be able to disconnect the rest of this. This goes to our trim switch that I don't think was functioning. We were jumping it out. Uh, 
I have a little parts bin here. I'm putting all my parts in. I didn't just chuck it on the floor, really. Now, what I'm happy to see is how clean and nice and neat these wires are here. I like to put as many screws back in as you can because it just makes it easier later on. So there is a primer solenoid wire here. It's always the purple wire on these Evan rooms. So now that's off. Got our starter solenoid tied in so we can pull that off. Separate it from the starter motor. And now that's disconnected and free. There's another ground here. It has a little star washer, so I'm gonna put that star washer back in place with the nut. So now that's all disconnected. And now we have one whole assembly with all of the ignition parts on it, except that minus the stator. Oh, there's one little bolt that came out. That's the head that broke off. And we'll put this in our parts box. Now we have it all assembled so we can put it back together the same way it came off. So here's the head of that bolt that broke off. And that is right here. We still have a stud sticking out. So that gives us a chance to possibly remove that. Next, we'll take a look here at our, right? This is our timing, right? Let me show you this. Our timer base here. First of all, I'm very happy that these are all original parts. I thought they were. Not a big fan of CDI aftermarket parts. They don't always work well. It's kind of a 50-50 shot. As you heard when I was on the Boaters podcast with Aaron from Born Again Boating, he agrees it's kind of a 50-50 shot when it comes to that. So we're just gonna disconnect it off of here. We wanna make sure we don't break any linkage pieces. And then we have some bolts here, or we can just kinda of take these, open them up a little bit so the wires can come out. And there's just some screws in here holding this in place. So it's these little clips. Took all of those clips and screws, plus all of the bolts that hold on all of my coils and my regulator plate and everything that I use, my bolts that held my stator down, all of those are gonna be in one baggie, so I know that's what I used for it. So I took all those off, it's just gonna slide off, and then we just have to disconnect it from here. We wanna be careful, we're gonna pry this out, but we don't wanna break the plastic if we don't have to. And there's your trigger base. And here's all our electronic bolts, so I'm gonna seal that up. We'll get our starter motor off, we'll spin this around and start on the carburetors pick on our starter motor next. Actually, we'll get this fuel pump off and make it a little easier to get to that. So airbox comes off really nicely. Two nice little wing nuts. This was really cool design. Makes it easier for winterizing when the time comes and you want to spray fogging oil. Uh, some of them got a little difficult with nuts and bolts and everything, but these stay right in here. Pulls right off. Nice little wing nuts on it that goes into the, to the carburetor base, so that's cool. So now we can access some of our tubing for our pump. We can disconnect some of that. So this was connected to my primer here, as you can see. So that just pulled right out. So that wasn't very good connection. This tie strap isn't tight at all. We'll get this off of here. So our primer goes up, the tubing goes up and feeds into a T here, we can see, that feeds two of our carburetors and then it feeds over to the opposite side to another T and feeds in, so it injects that fuel right at the base of the plate here, right, it's after the carburetors. So when you turn the key on and push it in, it's gonna energize, right, this is what the purple wire gets that's why this has to be grounded. So this gets power and it injects. Now you can override it with this and that'll prime all the time. You certainly don't want to leave it that way. And sometimes these leak. I usually keep these with me. I'll probably put the new O-ring in this just to be safe. But we're just going to go ahead and take this tubing look, uh, carefully off of here. And that's those two. I'll sneak this tubing down. This tubing went into the air box. And it comes all the way down at the base, right, right above the shifter linkage in there. So here's our other primer tube that comes up and over. And it goes to the top carburetor here, just like the other side. And then to the bottom part. So we'll fish that back out. 
There's your T. We'll fish that through here. So there's also to activate this. So this is this is all on its own. So we can put this right in the box. Then there's a tube that's connected to my engine here, has a clamp on it. And what's that do? What that's doing is, that's receiving the pulse. Right. So this is going to work on the vacuum of the engine to pulse this diaphragm for oil and for fuel. It's also electric. Right, we leave this disconnected when we're not using the VRO, so we'll probably definitely disconnect this. On the V6 motors, there's a separate switch that also will give you an alarm if it stops pumping, but we'll just be using the fuel side of this. So we'll put this aside. Now we have access to our starter motor here. So this is an aftermarket starter motor. It seemed to work fine when we were cranking it over. Proto Torque. Give me your opinion. What do you guys think of the Prototorque? I've used them before, had decent success with them. But as you can see, we have our ground bolt that's in here. So this is what we connect to. So we're gonna make sure that's tight so we have a good ground when we tie everything back in. Now we can attack these carburetors. Gonna take another little plastic baggie and put all of my bolts in here that I used for taking my starter motor and my solenoid for my primer and my fuel pump. And we'll start on these 3 8 bolts to remove this. So there is a fuel rail in here. What I'm going to do is try and get the fuel rail out. So you can see how this goes. Now these crack sometimes, so we want to be careful with it. We don't want to break anything. We're going to have to disconnect, so I'm going to disconnect it from the carburetor bottoms. This way we're off the fuel rail. Now I have to disconnect my link here, so I want to be very careful. I don't want to break this. I mean, I can get another one, but I, I just try not to, you know. And then there's a set of carbs. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the bowls off. And we're going to make sure there's not all kinds of sediment in there. I do like the fact that they have these drains up front because you can flush this maybe beginning of the season if maybe you're using ethanol fuel, but we'll, we'll get into these later. Okay, so one of the first things I notice, and this happens on a lot of these Evan routes, our follow is, is broken. So that's gonna throw off our timing. We're not gonna hit, right? So when our cam hits this, when we go full throttle, or even when we come off of idle, our cam is, is not our pushing our throttle in time, right? So we're already advancing our timing, but we haven't touched our throttle yet because the thickness of this is wrong now because the piece is broken off. I have another one. I've always kept these. I have like six or eight of them. I, I buy them and put them in a little kit that I have because these usually break and they'll make it run kind of poopy. So again, we'll, we'll get into these. Meanwhile, let's check out the rest of this. We'll get the rest of this tubing off. And another little baggie. I always save these little Ziploc bags whenever I get parts, just because I like to put my nuts and bolts in them. So I know these are all the carburetor, or I should say manifold bolts. We have some linkage here we're gonna take off. We'll get that out of the way. Then we'll kick this engine up and we'll get this manifold off. The throttle linkage nut I'm gonna put back on because it has a little plastic follower. There's one inside here as well. I don't wanna lose, but it's pretty much stuck in there. I wanna make sure I don't lose that. We've got quite a few bolts here to remove to split this case. I'll probably remove our intake manifold first, get all those bolts out, pop this off, because I want to check those reed plates, see what they look like, make sure there's no damage from any metal bouncing around in there. Then we see we have our bolt here, right? This is the one we drilled through. You can see where I drilled through it there. And I can see some white crustiness there too. So I'm going to go ahead and wire wheel that up really good, 
and I'm gonna juice it real good. As you know, we heated the heck out of this when we had it on the engine stand. So I'm hoping we can grab it and be able to turn that out. Now we do have another one on top now that broke, so that's two bolts. We'll see how many others break, but usually the rest of those, we usually don't have too much trouble with. We are gonna have to take this cap off. This has a seal in it, and there's a bearing on the top with a cap that we're gonna have to take off, so those two halves will come off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have some nice clean rags here that we're gonna wrap all those parts up in so we make sure we keep them clean, put them aside so they don't get all dirty while we're cleaning everything up. That'll be in our next episode. We're gonna continue this tear down. I'm excited to see, to get those pistons out and see what it looks like. We're really close now. Really hasn't taken much time, right, to tear this thing down. So please subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on the stuff I'm doing and how I'm doing it. I've gotten some great feedback from some OMC guys, which I am going to read to you all what this person has been sending me because it's been some great information to help us as we're rebuilding our motors and to maintain them so they run for many, many years to come. So please like, subscribe, send me those comments, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Oh, and I wanna tell you, very soon, I'm gonna have a maintenance guide for sale on Amazon on what to do. Where spring is gonna be here around the corner. I wanna get it done in the next month so that I can have it out there of what you need to do to unwinterize your motor and get ready for the summer. Some of the stuff, it's going to be the same stuff we're going to check here because we want to make sure everything is okay and check those basics. Again, remember, I always talk about, and I learned this from some people that I work with over the years, some wise people, that when you go to the doctor, he checks your blood pressure first, checks your pulse, checks your temperature, right? We want to make sure all that is good before we go spending money on things. So like, subscribe, send me those comments, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a great day.